she said she considers herself a spiritual person, but she's just read something that says God is a mental conception. All right, a, a legitimate, a legitimate source, we'll say. God is a mental conception, sure. But is God only a mental conception? No. Is love a mental conception? Yes. If you say to me, describe being in love. We could all do it. We could go around the Jopuri and each of us could describe in words what love feels like. And if you ended up having a horrible, horrible brain injury in such a way that you were a complete vegetable, you had no way to think, you had no way to speak, you, you, your brain was dead. You would no longer be able to have that mental conception of love. And yet, we all know that love exists in a lot of cells of our body that have nothing to do with our brain. And that love is experienced and felt in ways that are far deeper than our mental conception. And in the same way, yes, sure, God is a mental conception. We can talk about God. We can share our experiences of God. We can, particularly in the Indian tradition, tell stories of God, of the times when God came on earth, what God did, what God said, all of the different ways that God comes. And it's actually considered a great spiritual practice coming together and sharing the, the glories and the stories and the experiences that one has had of God. But you can't say that God is our ability to conceive of him. That puts him in our box. That basically says what I can conceive is what God is. If you say to a five-year-old, tell me about love, well, the five-year-old might tell you about, you know, his pet lizard and that the pet lizard is so great and he loves the pet lizard and when he picks up the pet lizard it crawls on his arm and it's so fun and they and they and they have they have a great great time together but can you really say that that's all that love is of course not then you say to a 15 year old tell me about love and his eyes will you know, go and he'll tell you about the girl he's head over heels in love with at school or the one on his favorite TV show and if only he could meet her. And then you ask a 25 year old about love and he's just about to get married and his, describes the change of life and then you ask an older man about love and he's gonna talk to you about his family, his children, his grandchildren. Has the definition of love changed? No. But that man's ability to conceive of love has changed. But it would be awfully presumptuous of us to say that love has changed because his brain has changed. His interaction with love has changed. But that doesn't mean love as an existence has changed. So my ability to conceive of God determines my relationship with God. But we can't say that because I, I conceive of God in one way, that that somehow means that that's what God is. And that that determines or defines the experience of God that other people would have. That would be a really, I mean, a very sad situation if we ended up with a sort of lowest common denominator that whatever one person's mental conception of God was, the rest of us were relegated to live in that experience. Because God somehow became what he was conceived of to be. Religion has boxed up God. Different religions, different paths have done that. They've turned something that is infinite and omnipresent into this little box. And they've all had different reasons for doing so. We won't go into them now. But to understand that God is bigger than that and that you can have a relationship with God in whatever way works for you is beautifully free.
And that, that's really probably the, the foundation of what, for those of us who were not raised in the Hindu tradition, is so wonderful about it, is you come here, and they're not saying, oh, you have to be Hindu for it to work for you. It's you in whatever religion you are, whatever culture you were raised in, whatever language you speak, can have a relationship with God as per what you need. And the only limitation, really, is how open your mind and heart can be. I mean, la the last point I'll mention is Pooja Swamiji always says, you know, it's so sad, people walk into a temple with a list as though the whole point of God was just, okay, my child should get an A on this exam, I should get this promotion, the toilet should stop leaking. Um, you know, we, we, we go to God with these, these lists of prayers as though somehow that's, that's what God's about. And yeah, God can do that. But what that means is that we're not gonna experience who God really is and what God's presence in our life really is about. And so what the, the teachings are is as, as open as your mind and heart can be, God will keep filling that space. And it's up to you to just keep opening and opening and opening your heart and opening your mind and opening your experience and your consciousness and your awareness so that you can be more and more and more and more filled with that presence.